Okay. Are you on LinkedIn? Yes, I am. Okay. And what is the purpose for you being on LinkedIn? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> you want to tell people really three things. Who you are, who you help, and how you can help them. Business has a LinkedIn profile these days, but the question is, are you using LinkedIn the right way? Learn how to, how to use LinkedIn to grow your client base, increase <coughs> referrals, and most importantly, grow your business. Regardless of your experience in LinkedIn, you'll learn simple strategies to help you achieve social media success. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce our speakers, Natalie Blatnick and Katie Jansen. Hello everyone. Hello. I first off want to give a very special thank you to Joanna Rolak and the rest of the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Chamber for putting on such fantastic events here. I mean without their contributions we wouldn't be here today and thank you for all the help that, that you give everyone here. Um, so we're here today to talk to you about LinkedIn. I'm going to share this photo with you. So if you see these crazy glasses here, this is actually from a LinkedIn conference that Katie and I attended in Las Vegas. Now, we're really happy to say that we made it back from Las Vegas so we can give you the presentation here today. Um, so I need a show of hands. Now, how many of you do not know what LinkedIn is? Great. <laughs> That's good. We got that cleared. Now, how many of you know what LinkedIn is, but do not have a LinkedIn account? Nobody will admit it. <laughs> so, we often find that in our professional career, whether Katie is training our, and developing our new advisors and staff, or whether I'm recruiting professionals, we often find that there's a lot of misconceptions that people have on LinkedIn. So I wanted to share some of those misconceptions with you today. They often think that LinkedIn is just a job seeking site. So if you're looking for a job, LinkedIn is absolutely great to go to. That's actually how I got connected with GCG was through my profile on LinkedIn and someone had noticed me. Um, but it's not just a job seeking site. There's so much more to that. Now, another thing, People know, just like Facebook or any social media, there are a lot of people that are on social media. So most people ask, you know, with everyone out there, how am I going to get my profile noticed? How can I stand out? And then thirdly, I think we can all relate to this email overload. I mean, the last thing you need is another email, another communication, another thing to manage. But it's actually quite simple. And so there's a lot of things that we'll address today to kind of cover some of those misconceptions. Lastly, and we get this all the time, <laughs> we'll help somebody develop their profile. And about a week later, they'll come to us and say, so I've been on this LinkedIn thing and nothing's happened. I have no business from it. And they're ready to throw in the towel, but they haven't really put the effort into it. So like anything else, when you're building anything, you really have to have a strategy behind that. Um, and you have to execute, you know, you have to have a game plan. So our goal today is to really educate you on the benefits of using LinkedIn and to help you figure out, you know, how you can LinkedIn, use LinkedIn to grow your professional and business career. And we're going to share with you just how simple that is. It's actually so simple that Buddy over here, which is Katie's dog, and Ransom, my horse, they use LinkedIn all the time. Their feedback is it's super easy. We find that Ransom and Buddy are always telling us that there's great local vets on LinkedIn, that there's recommendations of local vets in the area, um, that there's local animal networking sites, and most importantly, they always tell us where the best places are to go to shop for them. So if they can figure out how to do it, I'm sure you can figure out how to do it. 
So today on our agenda, we're going to discuss why LinkedIn, how to get your business and profile page noticed, how to grow, and Katie's going to talk about this a little more, how to use LinkedIn as really a prospecting machine, and also get introduced to the right types of customers that you are looking to grow your business, and then any additional tips and tricks that we have up our sleeves. Now, we want to say that LinkedIn, of course, is not, will never be your primary source of, of growing your business, but it's a great way to do it. And most importantly, most of what you do on LinkedIn is free. Everyone loves doing this, have to cover the statistics, the fun statistics of LinkedIn, but this is all good stuff to know. So one of the reasons why LinkedIn is so great is because it gives you access to the right types of people. People that have a better chance of buying from you. So there's 44 million users in the United States that use LinkedIn. More than 80% of LinkedIn members influence their business, business decisions at their company by using the data that they find on LinkedIn. So it's, not, it's also a really great way for you to get up-to-date information on what specifically your industry is doing and be able to present that information to where you're working. And this kind of supports the, the statistic that I just addressed. Confidence about the professional information that people find on LinkedIn is also very high at 82%. So that means that 82% you know, of people using LinkedIn are extremely confident about what they see on it. Affluence. So LinkedIn users are 97 times more likely to have a college degree as opposed to other social media sites like Facebook. And overall total, average household income is at 88,000. So take notes if you have a pen because this is something that you need to know. You want to make your profile really stand out. So a simple thing that you can do to just make your profile stand out, you'll see that there's a bar here on the right hand side that talks about your profile completeness. So you want to make sure that your profile is at 100%. Um, just to give you an example, so if you're just networking with someone at a networking event, the first impression is everything. I would assume I probably wouldn't have gotten my job if I didn't have a fully completed profile that listed everything, my activities, my awards, my contributions, my education. So making sure that you have all of those things listed is extremely important. That's firsthand, their first view of you could be through social media. So you wanna make sure what you have, that the content is very clear. And then also, it's all about the headline. You want to use a really impactful headline because it's going to be something when people do a search online, that headline, those key words are used um, throughout their search. So using a headline that has impactful words that states what you do is very important. You want to tell people really three things, who you are, who you help, and how you can help them. And also, I, we see this quite a bit, a lot of people make their page so business-like. They get out of touch with adding something personal on their profile. Um, a great way, an example, when, I, when I'm looking at a profile on LinkedIn, I'm looking for this individual to be a possible prospect um, employee, I look at their hobbies, their activities, their interests, because it's a great way to start engaging in conversation. If you start with business, it doesn't always work. So that personal touch might be that in that you have to really, you know, really open up the conversation. So besides, besides the summary, you want to have a call to action. So an example, I have in my profile a link that on my headline. So if somebody is interested in a career opportunity and they see my profile as a recruiter, they click on that link and that link automatically takes them to the careers page on our company website. So you want to make the user, you want to make it so user friendly for anyone that goes on your profile. 
And next, social proof is powerful proof. Again, like I had said before, make sure you list your education, your awards, your recommendations, your skills and expertise, and your endorsements. So we know that quite a few of you um, are local business owners as well. And you know, it's really important to make sure that you have a company page on LinkedIn besides actually just having your profile. The company page is a great way to get your company noticed. And it really, it's almost like a second website. And the more you have your business name out there, the more likely it's going to come up in the Google search engine. So this is very kind of organic. The more you have your company name out there, again, the easier it is for your company to get noticed. So you'll see on, this is the home page um, on this particular company. So there's a home page, a careers, a products page, and then you also have your insights. So of course, list any current careers that you might have that you're, you're seeking to employ. Um, products, what do you sell? You want to list that up there. And then also insights. So if you want to talk about promotions that you have going through your company or some maybe key individuals that are on your team, you know, get that information out there. And then you'll also see this is really simple. This picture here, it really states it's the Seaside Amusement Park. So that really is very clear about what they do. So that banner image is not only an excellent visual, but you want to make sure that visual is very clear so that user, when they first go on your page, the first few seconds of being on it, they know what you do by that photo or they're enticed to look at more. And then also make sure that you get product recommendations from the network of people that you're connected to on LinkedIn because people like doing business with local people people that they know that they can trust here. So any of your you know, clients that live locally that you can get to post about a certain product or if you're a nonprofit organization and you have someone that wants to share with them the successes that they've had of volunteering for your industry, whatever that is, you know, make sure that you get those recommendations out there. So let's talk about this. On your profile or your company page, who should be on your network? So number one, you know, of course, you decide who those right connections are. But content and your connections are absolutely king. You don't want to just connect with someone for the sake of connecting with them. It doesn't really matter if you just have a high volume of people. If you don't know those people that you're connecting with, I would highly advise to kind of sort through your contacts and ask yourself, is this somebody that you could potentially see as you know, kind of a center of influence type person, a great referral source, you want to make sure that the people you're connected with are powerful. And then, of course, LinkedIn is a fantastic way to develop personal connections. You know, an example would be if you have someone that wants to connect with you on LinkedIn, you're able to view their profile and you see that they can be of maybe a benefit to your business. Instead of connecting with them right away, why don't you just ask them, say, hey, I got a chance to look at your profile. Maybe before we connect, why don't we meet up and have a cup of coffee? I'd love to hear more about what you do for your business and also you know, maybe tell you a little bit more about myself. So make that connection a little bit more personal. And then first is you know, obviously start developing your list by people you know. Normally in recruiting, I tend to stay away from competitors. I don't necessarily want my competitors to see what potential people I'm looking at for recruiting, so I usually will not connect with them. Um, COI, so your centers of influence, anyone that could be a really good referral source for you. And then of course, group contacts, so focus on your niche prospecting connect with local business owners, um, and then also a great example at nonprofit development. I know quite a few of you are probably involved in your local Rotary Club, your chamber, a woman's auxiliary. If you're looking to recruit board members, there is absolutely no better way than using LinkedIn as an excellent communication in terms of identifying who potentially would be interested in your organization by doing some advanced search options, which Katie will get into. So on that note, I'm going to turn the floor over to Ms. Katie Jansen, and she's going to tell you how to really use LinkedIn. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. All right, I want to get some feedback. I want to get
get some feedback from the audience. I know you, sir, you look very interested in our presentation today. What is your name? Ed. Ed? Ed. Ed. And what is your business? I'm an attorney. Okay. Are you on LinkedIn? Yes, I am. Okay. And what is the purpose for you being on LinkedIn? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you know what, you are a great example, Ed, for me today because this is really what we're gonna talk about. Um, how to really build and grow your business on LinkedIn, okay? There's a lot of small business owners in this room. I spoke to you, a few of you uh, before lunch here uh, about your business and about what you're trying to accomplish. So let's talk about um, how to find prospects on LinkedIn, okay? Now, prospects for everybody in this room are gonna be different, right? The types of customers and clients that you're going after are going to be unique to each and every person in this room, each and every business in this room. So what are some ways that we find these people, okay? What are some ways that we prospect on LinkedIn? Really, there's, there's eight main ways that Natalie and I have really identified to find uh, these types of prospects and clients on LinkedIn. So current clients, centers of influence, and your natural market um, are one way to find more prospects, more clients, more customers on LinkedIn. Uh, using the keyword searches and finding colleagues or classmates. Uh, target and niche marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about target and niche marketing today. Uh, the people you may know feature is a great feature. We'll talk a little bit about that. And again, this is a very high level discussion today. Um, if you'd like you know, more information, feel free to reach out to Natalie and I. Um, the uh, manual search, conducting a manual people search or company search, uh, advanced, advanced uh, people search or company search is also another way. Using groups is another way to find prospects. And we're going to touch on each and every one of these just a little bit today. Okay. So why is LinkedIn so great for prospecting? Let's talk a little bit about this today. <clears throat> There's really no better place than LinkedIn to effectively find prospects and clients than LinkedIn. Um, you can read a little bit about, this has really been proven successful in generating warm lead referrals. How many of you guys cold call in your business? Okay. You will no longer have to cold call if you use LinkedIn effectively. Every call will be a warm call. Okay, and we'll teach you a little bit about that. So if you're using LinkedIn proactively, um, this can be a great way to find referrals, specifically, okay? How many of you have a lot of your business generated from referrals specifically? Almost every one of you, right? Okay, and I'm sure that referrals are usually asked from some of your best clients, correct? You get your referrals from the people who love doing business with you, okay? Well, LinkedIn is a great way to find referrals, okay, and be proactive about finding referrals. And how we do that, okay, is a little method called <clears throat> the VIPS system. How many of you guys are, are familiar with Bill Cates, the author, Bill Cates? Any of you? I know my, my financial advisor friend, Michael Resnick from GCG Financial is, but other than Michael, um, Bill Cates writes some books on obtaining successful referrals. And he actually talks about LinkedIn when he does his, his uh, presentations. And the way that he does it is the VIPS system, which is value, okay, importance, permission, and suggest. So before you next go out to a client meeting, okay, I want you to connect with them on LinkedIn. All right, I want you to take a look at their second and third degree connections. And I want you to take a look and see who it is that you think might be a great prospect for you to get referred to from that client, okay? Print those profiles out. Bring them with you to your client meeting, okay? And now Natalie and I are gonna demonstrate a little bit about that VIPS system and how that works, okay? Natalie, did you find some value in us meeting today? Most definitely. It and what great. did you find to be of most value? You know, you really helped me determine kind of what my needs are for my retirement. Excellent, so I helped her find what her needs are for retirement and how to retire on time, that's great. With that in mind, Natalie, can I ask you a really important question? Sure. Great. 
Well, I found you're really well connected on LinkedIn. You know, I mean, you know a lot of high net worth, high uh, connectivity type of people that I would love to get connected with, that I think that would also find some value in us getting together. Would you mind if we brainstormed a little bit about some of these people and we talked about some of those connections to see who might also find some value in us getting together? Oh, that sounds great. Great. How about Bill Jones? Uh, how long have you known Bill Jones for? I've known Bill for three years. We serve on the board of directors together for a local nonprofit. Great, great. So now I've just gotten to know a little bit about some of her connections, all right, through LinkedIn. Um, I've gotten to know a little bit of background, and then I'm also going to ask her, Natalie, would you mind introducing me to Bill Jones? I'd be more than happy to. Just tell me how to do it. Okay, great. So we can find effective ways to get introduced that way proactively, proactively through LinkedIn. So really what we're talking about here is your six degrees of Kevin Bacon, guys. All right? So this is the only social networking site that allows you to see second and third degree connections of your connections. What a better way to replicate your clients, your best A clients and customers, right? Is to find more of them. And typically, those connections that are gonna be their connections on LinkedIn will be similar in financial situation, in their needs and wants and buying habits, okay? So your little six degrees of Kevin Bacon will allow you to open up a tremendous referral opportunity to additional clients and customers. All right, now, the only way I know how to get to this classmate connection uh, application is through this link right here, and I know you probably can't see it. See Natalie and I afterwards. It's the only way I know how to get to it is through this linkedin.com slash alumni, or slash college slash alumni, okay? I don't know how else to get to it. Um, if you have gone to college, okay, myself, I attended law school for one year and decided it wasn't for me at Pepperdine University School of Law, in addition to the University of Wisconsin-Madison for four years, and then I also took some extension courses at UCLA, okay? I listed all of those on my LinkedIn profile, because why? Because now it's opened me up to all my prior classmates with the years that I've attended through this application, okay? Not only that, but where they work, what they do, and where they live. So now, if I'm targeting attorneys within the greater Chicago area, because I know I do business with a lot of attorneys, and I wanna call Bill Jones the attorney who graduated from the University of Wisconsin in the year of 2000, I can say, Bill, you and I went to school together. We didn't even know each other back then, but guess what? I'm trying to do some more business with attorneys in the greater Chicago area. What a great door opener, right? Now it's a warm call. It's not a cold call anymore. So class, uh, classmate connections. Colleague connections, okay? Prior colleagues, I know, you know a lot of us have been in multiple careers, multiple different positions and multiple jobs. If we've listed them all on our LinkedIn profile, this ability to add other connections through the colleagues button, okay, add connections, colleagues, will allow you to track down former colleagues of businesses that you've been involved in. Just another way to be able to connect with more people for a door opener to more connections, okay? How many of you know what your target and niche markets are? Know kind of who you're trying to target, kind of? Yeah? Margaret, what is your target or niche market? Okay. So married, income over 100,000 in this geographic area within a certain radius, right? Okay. Target and niche markets are very achievable to, to prospect through LinkedIn. It's the best way to find them. There are three different ways, okay, that we've identified to be able to do it. Joining targeted groups, we'll talk about that. Requesting introductions from your current contacts. We talked a little bit about that already. And then running an advanced search. This is my favorite because it allows you to be a detective in finding the types of clients and customers that you're looking for. It's fun. And you can detect by location, company, industry, school, 
relationship to you, even language, if you're looking for specific language speakers. Okay, real quick, the people that you may know feature. Have, have any of you seen this on your profile before? People you may know? Anybody? Okay, most of you. It's on your home page. Okay, right on the right hand side, as you go to LinkedIn, if you have a profile, you'll see a people you may know button. Very simple. This is identifying people from your profile from previous companies and colleges and associations and groups that you've listed on your profile. So the more things that you've listed on your profile that you're involved in, associations and philanthropic organizations, for example, the more opportunities to connect with more people you'll have, okay? And it'll identify people that you may know and allow you to com maybe connect with them all at one time through the people you may know feature, okay? Just a real quick little tip and trick. Okay, we talked a little bit about getting introductions from your connections, how to do that, how to print out those profiles, how to really look for those people. On the advanced people search, let's talk a little bit about this, okay? The advanced people search. So if you're looking for married individuals making over a certain income within a certain demographic, this is the, be the best place to go, okay? So under the people search, to the right-hand side is gonna be a little magnifying glass that you'll click on for that advanced search. And this will allow you to enter keywords, okay, married. Um, it'll allow you to, to enter income. I want incomes of over 100,000. Uh, geographic location, I want people that are in, within a 35 mile radius of uh, the Lake Forest area, okay. Um, and a number of different other things, you know, industries, location, relationship to you. So the keyword uh, advanced people search using the keywords or other types of um, search queries is really going to allow you to hone in on your target niche markets, okay? The groups feature. How many of you are a member of a group right now on LinkedIn? Margaret, what, what group are you a member of? The Landscape Design Association. Landscape Design Association. Great. Groups are an excellent way to find the types of individuals that you're looking to do business with, to make you an expert in your industry, to post things on the landscape architect design website about your professionalism, about your knowledge, okay, so that you'll be recognized as one of the industry experts. But also, those that are members of the group are interested in hearing about it, and you'll have access to their contact information you'll have access to all the members of those groups, okay? 50 groups, you get to belong to 50 groups, guys. So choose them carefully, uh, but choose the groups that have the most members so you get access to the most people. And it's, very, it's a very simple email or a very simple phone call. You know, uh, Michael, we're both members of the landscape design group, and I saw that you have an interest in landscape design. I'd love to get together with you over a cup of coffee and discuss how I might be of assistance to you, and a little bit more about what I do. Right? Simple, isn't it? Company prospects. How many of you guys do business to business work in this room? Quite a few, right? Okay. Those of you that do business to business work and are tar targeting other businesses, especially the bank table over here, right? Right? Um, this is going to be the best way for you to find other businesses that you're going to want to do business with. Okay? So, industries. I want to do more business with the real estate industry, okay? I get most of my business from the real estate industry, so I'm going to target the real estate industry, and I want a company size, uh, I don't know, 11 to 50 people, because the smaller, you know, smaller groups are better for me. And I'm, I'm looking for, you know, only Fortune 50 companies do I really want to hone in on, okay? The company search, advanced search, is the way to be able to find additional businesses either that are referral sources to you, that will refer you more business, your centers of influence, your referral sources, other companies that you do business with, that you work well together, or business to business contacts, okay? How do you approach prospects? So now you've found a bunch of prospects, what do you do with them? What do you say? 
Okay? We found three ways that work really well for us. All right? I'm a talker, so I like to get on the phone. But there are three ways that you can do it if you don't like to pick up the phone as much as I do. Um, requesting an introduction on LinkedIn. Okay? If you're choosing those searches that are only second degree connections, guess what? You know somebody that they know. Michael Resnick, you know, I know that we're both connected to Natalie Blatnick. How do you know Natalie? You know, I'd love to sit down with you and talk more about how we might be of value to you in the business that you do at GCG Financial. You know, what a great door opener. So there is an ability to request an introduction from Natalie to introduce me to Michael Resnick through LinkedIn. Okay? If you have any questions on that later, just let me know. Um, you can email them directly. A lot of folks, if they're smart, are going to have their email address on their LinkedIn page so that you can contact them. And since you are a person I trust, I wanted to invite you to join my LinkedIn network. You know, request that introduction and then request a meeting. Simple as that. If you like that more passive approach. Me, I like to pick up the phone. So I call them. And I track down their contact information even if I'm not a connection with them and I'm going to give them a call and say, you know, we are both uh, connected with Natalie Blatnick. Um, I noticed you're, you're very well connected on LinkedIn. Good for you. I love using LinkedIn too. How do you know Natalie? You know, let's talk a little bit about that. Soften it up a little bit. You know, this is what I do. I think it would be a benefit. Natalie's found it of benefit that she and I got together. I think you would find it of benefit too. Why don't we get together over a cup of coffee and talk about that? Okay, now it's going to talk a little bit about some cool tips and tricks that we've discovered that I think you'll like as well. So, out of all of you business owners, how many of you send out email blasts for your company? Okay, we have a few. You need to send out communication right so people know what you do. This is a really easy thing to do once you've developed your connections on LinkedIn. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you can export all of those contacts. So besides actually sending all of your connections a message through LinkedIn, you can actually export all of your contacts. So how you do this is you wanna go ahead and click on your contacts um, button through, you can just access that when you're on your home page, And then you're just gonna scroll down and click on connections. And then you're gonna see at the bottom, just right here, you're gonna see in the lower right-hand corner a button that says Export Contacts. That's gonna export all your contacts and export them into a CSV file. So if any of you use MailChimp or Constant Contact, you can export all of those lists into... Or Outlook. Yeah, or Outlook. You can take those contacts and import them into your email marketing program. So I think this would be a huge benefit for you um, and a good use of your time. And lastly, so this is awesome. Sorry if you do not have an iPhone because this is the only phone that you can download this app. I'm gonna share with you the easiest way to follow up after a networking event. So before I knew about this app, Every networking event that I went to, what did I do? I grabbed a whole bunch of business cards, so I'd have like 30 business cards at the end of the event, and I would have to individually go in and write in the contact information and then send a personal email if I was interested in meeting up with that person. Incredibly time consuming. What Card Munch does, you can find it right on, right on your, your app store for your, your iPhone account. Download Card Munch. What you do is you just take a physical business card and you take a photo of it. You just simply snap a photo of it. We have no idea who's actually processing this information. We've been wondering who these card munch people are because the app is free and who actually does this. But they actually find their profile on LinkedIn and you have the ability to automatically have that contact information imported into your phone as well as it gives you the opportunity to just click a button and click connect. That's all you have to do. And what you can do is you can actually customize your message. So you can say, it was so great meeting you at the networking event. It was great talking to you. I'd like to meet up and have a cup of coffee, whatever it is, and, and see how we can be of value to one another. This will take any follow-up that you have with a networking event and just cut it in half. 
It's a great app, so download it. That is really, I guess that basically sums it up for our presentation today. And Katie and I, um, we know that some of you with your LinkedIn experience are at different levels. So before you leave today, if you want more information about how to really grow your profile or your company page and how to really enhance what you do, uh, feel free to contact us you know, afterwards. And we'll be here after the presentation today to just answer any questions that you have. Are there but, any questions right off the bat, though? Margaret. When you have like, your personal, you know, your professional page on LinkedIn and then you have your company page, do you run those simultaneously or do you keep them completely separate? So your professional page, your company page, do you have different contacts than your personal or is it done at the same time? If you're a, a single mm -hmm. business owner, and that it's your business, I would suggest just having a company page, honestly, because this isn't a social media site like Facebook. Okay, this isn't for finding new friends. This is for making business connections only. Okay, so your identity out there is strictly business in this, not like it is in Facebook where it's all over the board, in my opinion, anyway. Any other questions? Not really a question, but a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, on Android, there's an app called mm. Evernote Hello, mm. which does the same as card much. It's also on Android. Sweet. Does it find people on LinkedIn? Yes. Great. Oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Thanks. Just a cautionary tale of your export of emails into MailChimp or mm -hmm. Contact Contact. You're mm -hmm. not technically permissioned. Mm -hmm. I, another recommendation to kind of back what you're saying is when we talked about quality connections and connecting with people you know, that's the most important thing. I mean, because they, if you have enough of un unsubscribes to your email and it's just, you're just importing names for the sake of importing names, then that's not a good idea. But if you have quality connections, your first connections or whatever that is, they know what you do, more than likely they're not going to unsubscribe, which yeah. makes them a more quality person to import. So again, think of the quality that you have. Yeah. Uh, another suggestion uh, would be to uh, endorse other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so endorsements is just a feature um, that you can, you know, besides recommending somebody, you can quickly endorse them for their skills and expertise. And so that's located, if you just look at your main profile page, you'll actually see an endorsement section. Um, you can ask people, you know, for an endorsement, um, but a nice way, maybe after a networking event, after you meet with someone, once you have a conversation with them about what they do professionally, a great thing to do after an event is endorse them for their skills and expertise, because you know what they do. It's really friendly, and usually you'll find when you do the favor for someone, that they'll return the favor and do that for you. This is fairly new on LinkedIn, and you'll notice that when you're choosing your skills and expertise, you're allowed to have 50, and they'll have a green arrow or a red arrow. <clears throat> green arrow means they're up in search from last year at a certain percentage. The red means they're down. You, this is a search engine optimization tactic. Choose your skills and expertise based upon high numbers that people are looking for. Well. Thank I you for having us. That's it for today. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure.